Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk about how you can use the fur popcorn effects as part of the popcorn effects library for you to create a couple of cool effects and I'll kind of deconstruct that for you and take apart all the attributes. So what we're going to try and do is recreate something similar to this where we're actually using the fur as sort of a long haired grass in like a grassy field. I just have these extra props here for, uh, for emphasis. Uh, so we're going to kind of try and create something similar to this uh, which is kind of a cool effect and I'm going to show you how you can place uh, fur in different areas as well. Okay, so let's get started first of all by starting a new project. We're going to start from scratch here, right off the bat. Okay, and what we're going to do is go to our uh, set tab up here and into the particle folder. And in the popcorn effects library 40, under the nature folder, you shall find your fur effect right here. So we just double click and add that in. And it'll just add in as a little dummy, just like this. Now, as always, if you want to simulate this, you just press the shift S hotkey. And it'll simulate. You can see we have sort of a furry, like, um, whatever it is. Okay, just a little, little dude. It's actually our dummy that's uh, growing a bunch of fur here. Okay, now you can apply the fur to different props and different meshes and stuff in your scene. And we're going to take a look at how to do that right off the bat here. So let's go ahead and press Shift S to end the simulation. And what I'm going to do is just create the simplest of planes, uh, the simplest of meshes, which is a plane. So I'm going to go to Create surface and create a plane all right now i'm going to take this plane down because it's fairly large as you can see 100 by 100 so i'm just going to go to the uh, properties over here uh, lock the scale xyz and just change it to a value of 10. okay so we got a nice little plane there and then we need to reset the scale just press reset scale okay dokes and then we'll press the w hotkey to move it up a little bit uh, actually i'll just leave it right there for now we have the dummy because it's easier to click on the dummy when it's down there Okay, so what we want to do first is we want to apply, uh, we want to add the mesh as a target mesh for our uh, fur effect here. So I'm going to select the uh, dummy here, go to my popcorn effects tab, and the first thing you want to do is go up here and select sampler mesh in the sampler list item, or sampler list section here. Okay, and it'll uh, uh, have a sampler mesh section here, and it'll give you an option for a little pick target tool. So you pick the target and pick the mesh, as easy as that. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to press shift S again, and the entire fur is now on the plane. Okay, so it's no longer on the dummy. All right, so that's, that's how easy it is to just apply the fur effect to any particular mesh. Now you're probably wondering, hey, why are there so many different colors? Why are they this size? And they kind of look like tentacles at this point. Uh, I'm gonna explore all of the different attributes in just a moment here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're, we're gonna talk a little about the texture for mission up here. We're gonna talk about the color map on the mesh a little bit later, but let's just talk about all these attributes uh, first of all, okay? So the strands per surface unit, this one you need to kind of change every time you simulate. So if you simulate right now, shift S to simulate, you'll see we'll have 4,000 uh, strands per surface unit, okay? So quite a few, it creates a quite, uh, quite a thick appearance right here. Now if you wanted to uh, change that to a different value, say I change it to like 100 for example, if I press 100, it's not going to change. We need to press, uh, we need to re-simulate. So shift S and shift S one more time. And now we only have a hundred units. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, pretty simple stuff right there. Uh, we're going to just maybe add it a little bit higher, maybe about 2000 at this point. Okay. Oops. Not 200, 2000. There we go. And re-simulate there. Okay. So we have a kind of a thick, uh, grassy looking appearance here. Okay, now there's particles per strand here as well. So particles per strand is, uh, one you have to be careful with. Uh, right now you can see if we zoom in really close on these uh, strands of, of fur here, you can see they're not really that detailed. They're kind of, there's a little bit of kinks in them when they bend. Uh, when you increase the particles per strand, it's basically increasing the amount of sections that your uh, fur strand has to bend. So the, the higher you put this, the more resources it's going to take on your computer, so be aware of that but the more flexible and natural your fur is going to look. So if we change this to a value of like a 15, for example, you'll notice that we have a bit more of a wavy kind of appearance to these. If we change it to a value of a 30, even more so, let's just uh, re-simulate just to kind of show you there. Okay, so now you see it's like kind of lagging a little bit, but our strands are a little bit, are fairly nicely rounded off. So. Generally what you want to do if you have a, a lower performance computer, you want to kind of keep this around the value of 10 or something like that. Okay, let's just uh, stop this for now and maybe change that to a value of uh, 10. Something a bit more reasonable and then shift S. Okay, now the strands per unit, 
uh, strands per surface unit and the particles per strand. These are the ones that are going to take up most of your uh, memory. So if you want like the fastest performance, you'll want to kind of have the perfect, find the perfect balance between these two uh, attributes right here. Okay, strand length, the next couple are fairly simple, uh, fairly straightforward, strand length. So if you increase the strand length, boom, there you go, okay? Now this is a kind of a good example where you can see the kind of kinks right there. You don't want to keep the strand length too long, otherwise it looks kind of weird. Um, I like to kind of keep it around the 0 0.2 area. And then there's strand thickness as well. So you take the strand thickness down, fairly simple and straightforward. You can really pump it up so it's almost like an alien planet, the surface of an alien planet just kind of undulating there and stuff like that. Or you can take the strand thickness down and get more of a grassy appearance, which is kind of what I want to achieve in this tutorial. So I'm going to keep that grassy appearance right about, uh, right about there. Okay, what, I, what I'm also going to do here is I'm also going to just end the simulation uh, really quick here and take my plane up. I'm going to tilt it because the next few ones, uh, the next few we're talking about here kind of do have to do with gravity and the direction of your uh, of your fur. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring the plane up and tilt it a little bit and then shift S to simulate one more time. And now you can see when we do that, they're kind of just moving along towards the uh, side, towards the tilt of our uh, plane here. Okay, so they're just, you know, uh, tilting towards this direction. So if I go up here, there's vertical resist. So the vertical resist right now is pretty low at 0 0.15. If we increase that, Notice that we'll have these strands stand directly upwards. Um, vertical resist is, you know, generally you want to keep it fairly low if you want to have a more natural kind of uh, fur appearance. Okay, so maybe keep that to 0 0.14 or something like that. Uh, acceleration to velocity doesn't have a whole lot of effect unless you have a very high particles per strand. Uh, what acceleration to velocity does is it kind of uh, has your hair, the, the tip of each individual hair strand fall further behind the actual undulating movement. So it'll have a bit more of a, you know, curved uh, appearance. Uh, if, you, if we do this right now, we're not going to see much of a difference because we only have maybe about uh, uh, 10 particles per strand. If we had that higher, the acceleration to velocity would be a lot more uh, pronounced, okay? But you can see it looks fairly nice still, uh, fairly nice and undulating. If we take that down, they'll kind of be a bit more, uh, a bit more st static-like, a bit more stiff, okay? Uh, not a huge difference though, but I like to kind of keep this, you know, fairly high, just a, a bit more of an interesting result. Okay, and then damping is just kind of like basically damping the movement of your uh, strand. Okay, so again, it doesn't have too much of an effect. Um, if you take that down, they're a bit, the, the strands are a bit more wild. If you take the damping down, if you increase it, they'll be a bit more uniform. Okay, so you can use this in combination with vertical resist to kind of keep your uh, strands in place. Now, normal speed is one that's important because normal speed basically dictates uh, the how the uh, fur strand is emitted uh, in relation to your mesh normal. Okay, so the mesh normal is generally um, straight up from the mesh. So if we take the normal speed up to the maximum value here, you can see that each strand is kind of shooting out almost perpendicular from the mesh. If you take the vertical resist up, there you go. Okay, so medium value vertical resist but we'll keep the vertical resist down because the normal speed, if we take that all the way down, you'll find that there's less reason, uh, there's less restriction for the actual direction of the fur. If we take it all the way down to zero, it'll actually go below our mesh, okay? So the value of zero will actually go below the mesh. You gotta be careful with this one. This is one of the uh, more useful attributes or parameters that you can use, okay? So I like to keep the normal speed, you know, fairly high if you, want, if you want your strands to be sticking out further, um, perpendicular to your mesh, and uh, keep them down if you want to be more, a bit more variety for your hair, a bit more flow. Okay, and then downward force, a uh, fairly good one as well. Let's take our normal speed up to uh, maximum there and keep, take our downward speed down to maximum. So you can see the normal speed can make our fur go the, the opposite direction, but the downward force um, has to correspond, has to... Uh, conform to the direction that the fur is going out in the first place. So if I take the downward force all the way down, it's almost like there's a vertical resist, okay? So there's no downward force on the hair. However, if we take it down like this, we'll get a bit more downward force, all right? It's almost like there's more wind, okay, in this case. Although we don't have wind, unfortunately, in this particular uh, fur effect. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about these uh, 
sampler list items up here. So we have the sampler mesh, which is already set to the plane, okay? We have the texture for emission. Right now it's all white. Now, I'm going to load in a couple of different images here into the texture resources, and I want you to, uh, we're going to observe the differences. Now, these all correspond to RGB values in a, in a PNG file, okay? So I'm going to just double click on the texture resources, and I have a couple of these saved up. Now, what you want to take a look at first, I'm going to load these items here in Photoshop, or this one rather in Photoshop, the shapes. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and open with Photoshop. There we go. And in Photoshop, I'm going to take a look at the RGB values of these two shapes. Okay, one is a, we'll just zoom in a little bit here. Let's just uh, oop, zoom in, there we go. So let's go ahead and take a look with our picker tool at this color right here in the swatch. You can see the R value is 255, uh, G is 60, and blue is 255 as well. Now, this is uh, important here. The R value kind of corresponds to the length of your individual first strand. So if you have a low R value, so if your R value is low, then you're going to have shorter uh, strands of fur. If your G value is low, then you're going to have thinner values. Okay, so your strands are going to be thinner. So you can individually, uh, you know, manipulate the values here to create your own custom length and width of your strands just using these maps here. So uh, the reason I talked about that is because this uh, uh, magenta uh, cube right here has a low green value. So this one is going to be very thin. Okay, the, the strands are going to be regular height, but they're going to be thinner than the rest of the strands. Okay. Let's take a look at this value right here, this cyan, almost cyan value. So this one has a low R value. The G and the B are still 255, but the R value is 134. So if you can remember, the a low R value means that your strands are going to be shorter. Okay, they're going to be shorter. And the blue value uh, is basically the same as the R value. So you don't really have to worry too much about the blue value. Basically, the R and the G are the only ones that you need to really worry about. Okay, and the white is just going to be everything normal. Okay, so let's go ahead and load this in in uh, my texture for emission channel here, and let's observe the results. So if I press Shift S to simulate one more time, notice now you can see that the cube right here, the magenta cube, we have much thinner fur in this section right here. So the fur is thinner. You can notice in the surrounding fur with the triangle. However, it's the same length, okay? So rel relatively the same length, but uh, a bit thinner. However, in the triangle section here, you'll notice that we have shorter fur, okay? So it's shorter than the surrounding fur. Okay, so you can manipulate those values individually in your texture for emission uh, maps, okay? So maybe you save them as PNG files. Let's go ahead and launch. Uh, we already launched in Photoshop here. Let's just close the other one. And let's kind of tr uh, change these values just to see the difference, okay? So if I take this value right here, or take the uh, magenta value, and I just fill it in, uh, this one over here. So now they're both magenta, and I go and File and Save. It's going to update that automatically in iClone. So if I go back to iClone, you can see they're both magenta now. And if I Shift S to simulate, now you can see the triangle is also thin. The strands are also thinner. However, they are the same length as the surrounding uh, stuff, okay? So pretty simple stuff, pretty straightforward. And if you want, of course, you can use your color map on mesh. Okay, currently we have all those separate colors. We can just swap that for the uh, same one here and shift S to simulate. And then you can see kind of a better result. So the cyan area there, the strands are thinner. Magenta area, the strands are thinner than the surrounding area. Okay, and the rest is, of course, just white. So the color map on mesh, that's going to determine the color of your strands, okay? So if I change my color map on mesh to this nice grassy green color here, then if I shift S to simulate, there you go. So we're gonna have a nice grassy green color and you can see clearly now the thinness in the square area and the triangular area there. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and this texture for emission, we're just gonna go ahead and scrap this. We can just refresh it like this and then we can press shift S to simulate. And there you go. So we'll have everything the same length now. We have a nice kind of grassy uh, green field here. And let's actually take the actual mesh of the uh, plane here and change our base color to that nice grassy green color there as well. So um, one little trick you can use 
if you're using this fur to simulate grass, is you can go ahead and uh, change your camera. So uh, what you want to do here is, you know, if I if I simulate right now uh, the fur like this, you can see I can go in like this, but um, it'll look okay. Um, but we won't have much freedom for for movement around like this. Um, so one thing you can do is you can actually change your camera focal length. Uh, go to go to create a camera here. And if you use a very uh, long camera lens there, you can see that we can really kind of exaggerate the uh, view. All right, so maybe something like this. Then if we simulate, we have more feeling of depth. And you can see that uh, it looks like almost like we're looking off into some kind of horizon here. And we can just kind of go like this and do, do, do. All right, and go through the grass like this and into Honey, I Shrink the Kids territory. All right, so uh, just kind of a little quick tip there for uh, you know selective camera use when you're using this for as a, trying to simulate the uh, the grass effect and stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, shift F to end the simulation. I'm going to show you one final example here that I have uh, saved up, which is this uh, project here with Mr. Uh, the uh, Curve Man. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and start that up. So here I have Curve Man just hanging out by himself. I'm going to actually delete the. Uh, we have another fur in this project. I'm going to delete it for now. So we have this uh, fur particle, and it's assigned to uh, Curve Man. You can see here in the sampler mesh. Okay, but let's go ahead and shift S to simulate this, and you can see we have we've given Birdman sort of a weird kind of beard and a cool-looking glowing mohawk. Now the reason they're glowing is because down here we have the uh, uh, exposure bloom selected. You can deselect that if you want, and it'll just kind of create something like this. All right, so you can uh, exposure bloom crit. Uh, kind of a cool glowing mohawk and glowing beard, I guess. Okay, but the way we achieved this is we just basically loaded up his uh, UV map. So if we uh, select Curve Man, go to the materials here, and you can just select any map really and load up the UV map in Photoshop. Okay, you can see it right here. And I'm going to just close that other one. And I have the other map that I used that I created here. So you can see here, Everything is blue, so this blue will make sure that you know all the other values are different from the values that I have in white. So I'm just going to press enter here and uh, turn the opacity for this layer down a little bit. Okay, so you can see exactly where I've added those two white stripes. One is right here along the chin area for our character, and one is right here along the top of the hair. Okay, so that's why he only has the mohawk on the top of his head right there and along his head. If I wanted to, what I could do is I could just, you know, change the color to white uh, on this um, top map here and maybe just paint it over. Uh, we can wrap, need to rasterize it there. Okay, maybe just uh, bring our size down here and we'll just uh, make this a little bit, cover a little bit more here. All right. And uh, make sure our passy is up there. Okay. And then just save this out as a PNG. Uh, there we go. PNG or desktop. I'll we'll just call it test. I don't know, whatever. Okay, and go ahead and save that. And then let's go to iClone and replace that uh, map. Oops, we need to select our uh, fur emitter there. And here's our texture for emission right here. So that's the previous one you can see right there. And if I go ahead and load up that one, we just, uh, I probably could have just saved it, but uh, there we go. Let's load up this one and give this one a test. Okay, so now you can see the fur is coming from his eyes and everything like that, not just from the bottom of his chin. So again, that's how you can really, uh, you know, uh, change the location on your character using the UV map where fur or anything like that is emitting from. <laughs> he looks like he's just kind of some weird hairy-faced alien. All right, but that's really about all I wanted to show you for this tutorial, guys. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a lot about the uh, the fur emitter and all kinds of cool things you can do with it. Um, so make sure you check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com and I hope to see you in the next video.